Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you the top 30 Microsoft 365 and Office 365 interview questions and answers. My name is Jasmine, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro fast. If you are preparing for your Microsoft 365 or Office 365 job interview or any similar role, you will need to have a well-rounded knowledge of the Microsoft 365 and Office 365 communication and collaboration platform. We have compiled a list of the top 30 most asked Microsoft 365 and Office 365 interview questions and answers asked by interviewers so that you can have success at your interview and get the job. Question 1. Tell me what you know about Office 365 and Microsoft 365. It is a Microsoft-owned productivity suite comprised of existing MS applications, including Word, Excel, OneNote, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Offered as a cloud-based subscription, you can purchase your preferred Microsoft 365 plan and start using it online immediately. If you're not familiar with Microsoft's expanded product offerings, you can also take advantage of MS Forms, SharePoint, Publisher, OneDrive, and Teams. Question 2. Let's say I am using Office 2010. Now if I install Office 365, will it overwrite the older version or work separately? Installing Office 365 will not impact older Office 2010 installations. Both tools can be used separately without causing any conflict. Question 3. What do you know about Microsoft Forms? Microsoft Forms comes as a feature in Office 365 Education, Microsoft 365 Apps for Business, or for Office 365 users with a Microsoft account including Hotmail, Live, or Outlook.com accounts. It allows you to create quizzes, questionnaires, surveys, user registration forms, and more. Your end users will be able to use these forms or quizzes through their mobile devices or web browsers. User submissions are automatically collected and converted into analytics data for evaluation. You can take this data to Excel and perform further analysis. Question 4. Can Office 365 act as a replacement for Dropbox? If so, how? For sure, OneDrive and SharePoint are perfect. OneDrive is great for document management as well as sharing, while SharePoint is built for collaboration, making both nice replacements for Dropbox. You can use them on any OS or browser. Question 5. Suppose you are an admin. Can you recover deleted files from OneDrive or SharePoint? Yes, admins can recover deleted files from OneDrive and SharePoint. Question 6. What if you, as a user, accidentally deleted a file? Can you now recover it? OneDrive backs up all files for 30 days. So if you deleted a file within the past 30 days, you could restore it. If you're using OneDrive's local app, the deleted file may also be present in the recycle bin or trash. You can also recover the file from there. Question 7. What is the difference between Microsoft 365 groups and distribution lists? A distribution list is a group of saved email addresses that can help users send emails faster to many people at once. A Microsoft 365 group deals with permissions. It can facilitate a shared workspace, files, calendars, and group emails. Microsoft 365 groups promote access to collaboration. Question 8. How can you modify Microsoft 365 user licenses? Modifying Microsoft 365 user licenses require access to the Admin Center or Azure AD. Options available there can modify licensing. Question 9. Can you give me an example of six Microsoft 365 admin roles and what they do? Number 1. Global Admin. This administrator has all rights. Number 2. Billing Admin. This administrator can purchase add-ons, subscriptions, etc. They can take care of existing plans, support tickets, and service health. Number 3. Password Admin. This administrator has the right to modify all passwords. Number 4. Exchange. Admin. This administrator has all rights related to Exchange Online, which is accessible through the Exchange Admin Center. Number 5. SharePoint. Admin. This administrator has all rights related to SharePoint Online, which is accessible through the SharePoint Online Admin Center. Number 6. Teams Administrator. 
This administrator has all rights related to Teams, accessible through the Teams Admin Center. Question 10. How do you report an email message and what happens once you do it? One can report emails using Exchange Admin. Once that happens, the reported email is sent to Security and Compliance. It can be reviewed as part of Security and Compliance reporting, which includes recommended actions. Question 11. What if your recycle bin is not showing up? How will you access it then? The best alternative way to access the recycle bin is through SharePoint. I will just go to More Features, then go to User Profiles, and then go to Manage User Profiles, and select the user for whom I want to view the recycle bin. Next, I will click on Manage Personal Site and access the recycle bin. Question 12. Can you convert a normal user account into an admin account? Yes, it can be done, however, not from that user account. An admin must change that user's license type or allow team administration rights to his group to assign the user admin rights. Question 13. Why is Office 365 a beneficial product for businesses? Office 365 is the most comprehensive productivity suite for businesses. Not only does it enable your employees to work remotely from anywhere, but Office 365 can also reduce hardware costs and promote data security. In fact, your team members can install the app on up to five devices and ensure that their needed data is always with them. Microsoft offers a few plans fit for any business use case. If you compare it with owning multiple tools and internally supporting the hardware needed to run those tools, Office 365 can be a cost-effective and efficient product. Question 14. Tell me about the main function of ADFS in Microsoft 365. Active Directory Federation Services, ADFS, is identity and access management. It allows secure access to information and data sharing with people outside your organization, such as your clients. It can also be accessed as a web feature through Windows Server OS. Question 15. Explain the steps of the Office 365 and Active Directory integration process. Step 1. In the Microsoft Office 365 dashboard, you need to navigate to Users, then go to Active Users, and then click on AD Synchronization link. Step 2. Click Activate for the preferred user. And when the notification shows up, click Download. Step 3. Install the Directory Sync tool with the help of guided screens. Step 4. Once done, sign in, go to Hybrid Deployment, enable the Password Sync checkbox and complete its configuration process. Step 5. After the configuration setup, tick mark the Synchronize Your Directories Now box. Step 6. Complete the setup. Question 16. Elaborate on all you know about the Office 365 Fast Track deployment. Office 365 is very helpful for businesses when they need to move their existing data systems to the cloud. The Fast Track service speeds up the process and saves time. Question 17. Can you tell me the main differences between Office 365 and Office 2019? Microsoft Office 2019 is a one-time subscription for a single device and includes conventional Office tools like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It has security updates like Office 365, but no significant extra features to make it mobile-ready. Office 365 is a cloud-based solution that you can use for a monthly or annual subscription. It has various Microsoft tools, and you can access even more tools and integrations when using it with Microsoft 365. You can access online support, tech support, feature updates, and security patches. Office 365 works on up to five devices. Question 18. Tell me about the identity models present in Office 365. There are three. Cloud, Synchronized, and Federated. Cloud identity is entirely stored and managed in Office 365. Usernames and passwords are stored in Azure Active Directory. Synchronized identity joins an on-premises Active Directory instance with Azure AD and synchronizes some data to allow for authentication and authorization information in multiple places. Federated identity means that all authentication and authorization decisions are redirected to and handled in on-premises Active Directory systems. You need Active Directory Federation services or a similar product to facilitate this. Question 19. How will you add a web part in Office 365? For this, you first need to log into the SharePoint dashboard using your Office 365 credentials. 
Click on Edit on the top left page tab and select Layout, then select Text Layout. After finalizing the layout, click on Insert tab and then go to Web Part, and it's done. Question 20. Name the operating system supported by Office 365. Besides Microsoft Windows OS, which is the recommended OS for using Office 365, you can also use it on your device running Android, Mac OS, or iOS. While there are no native Linux applications, you can still access Office 365 services through a web browser in Linux. Question 21. What rights does a guest user have in Office 365? A guest user has very limited rights. A guest can access a limited set of chats, files, invites, and group notebooks to collaborate with organizational users temporarily. Question 22. How will you differentiate between E1 and E3? E1 is web only, allows one terabyte of cloud storage, and costs around eight US dollars per month. There is no support for remote desktop, Citrix environment, or DLP, data loss prevention, in E1. On the contrary, E3 allows web, mobile, and offline access through multiple devices. You can have 5 terabyte of cloud storage space at the monthly fee of around 36 US dollars. Remote desktop, Citrix environment, and DLP are supported. Question 23. What is meant by Office 365 governance? Office 365. Governance refers to the set of policies and procedures that an organization implements to achieve its business goals while securing critical and sensitive data. This practical set of rules can cover compliance, business planning, cybersecurity, technology, and IT operations. Question 24. Is it possible to send an email using a shared mailbox? Yes, one can easily do that. However, for this, your user account or user role must have the send as or send on behalf of permission on the shared mailbox. The exchange administrator must set this permission. Question 25. List and library. How will you explain these two? As described by Microsoft, a list contains items that are collections of fields, properties, columns from items. Optionally, each item can have one or more attachments. A library is a list, but has exactly one file associated with each item. A library item also has fields, properties, columns from each item. Question 26. Say, I am using an older version of Office and now wish to switch to Microsoft Office 365. What should I consider? Your main consideration should be whether or not you need cloud connectivity. Do you want to access, modify, and manage data anywhere and everywhere, regardless of the device and storage you're using? If so, Office 365 is a must. Secondarily, if you're using an older version of Office, you may be missing out on features, security updates, and other tools that weren't available with your license, but are available through Office 365. If you want or need those, then you'll want to consider updating to attain them. Question 27. What do you know about directory synchronization and why is it useful? Directory synchronization is the Azure Active Directory Sync tool. It helps in syncing your on-premises AD users' data and configurations to Office 365. If you're using a synchronized identity model or want to migrate to a cloud identity model, you need directory synchronization to help with that. Question 28. Is Yammer SharePoint integration possible? Yes. Yammer SharePoint integration is possible now. You can integrate the two with the help of web parts. Once done, you will be able to pull in the data from Yammer and open graph technology. Also, the information can be pushed into the Yammer stream from third-party solutions. Question 29. What does a provider-hosted app signify? A provider-hosted app for SharePoint signifies that the app's components are hosted and implemented outside the SharePoint farm with a different server or service provider. Question 30. How can I change a user's password as an administrator? It can be done from the Admin Center or from Azure Active Directory directly. You must have global or password admin rights to do so. In addition to using these questions to prepare for your interview, you should prepare a one to two paragraph long introduction about yourself. It will further boost your chances of securing the job. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.